Welcome everybody here with Nick Stoller, the uh, director of Neighbors. You also probably have seen Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which you directed. Yeah. Co-wrote the Muppets movies. Yes. Uh, wrote and directed Five Year Engagement or co-wrote? I co-wrote and directed Five Year Engagement and uh, wrote and directed Get Into the Greek. Right. Yeah. Which is actually, you will definitely not remember, but the first time that you and I spoke. Oh yes, I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he is, is he is the uh, the first hangout we're doing live from South by Southwest. We will be rolling five six hours a day today, tomorrow, and Monday, uh, and we'll be talking to your one of the stars of the movie, Seth Rogen. Oh yeah, on Monday along with his writing and producing partner Evan Goldberg. Cool. Yeah. Um, Good guys. So the premiere. Funny is, juice. <laughs> <laughs> the premiere of the movie is tonight. Yes. Seven o'clock. How close to being done with it are you? Because it doesn't open for a couple of months. Are you wrapped? Do you still have more? We're in the midst of locking it. The movie, the, sh the version everyone will see tonight isn't mixed and isn't DI'd. So it's and it's uh, and there's a few differences, like a tiny few picture differences between this version and the final. But only things I would notice. <laughs> so. And you first met? Did you first meet Seth on Undeclared? Was yeah, that... we were, we were office mates, and he was. We wrote some episodes together. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've, we've been good friends ever since. Why is it, do you think, that that show has produced so many different successful writers, directors, actors, comedians? Um, well, we all made a deal with the devil. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know, like, I think it's a testament to, like, you know, Judd Apatow who created that show, um, and, you know, he exec produced um, Freaks and Geeks, but he has a real eye for talent, and I think, um, he encouraged, you know, I'll say for the actors, he encouraged a lot of those actors to generate their own material. So, you know, you have people who are hysterical like Seth or Jason Siegel, and he convinced them to write their own stuff. And I don't know if they would have ne necessarily become movie stars if they hadn't done that. You know? Right. Um, so a combination of that, and then we all kind of shared the same uh, tone uh, and interests. And so you're not surprised at all by the success that Seth has had on his own writing and, and now directing? I, you know, I'm not surprised because he, I remember meeting him and I was like, who is this 18 year old that like Judd has hired, you know, I mean at the time I was like 24 so I don't know why, I was like, so like, you know, up in arms at him, but the minute he opened his mouth I was like, oh he's the funniest person alive, he's so hysterical and funny. Right. Um, I, I guess like it's always you know, the fact that everyone has achieved such crazy success is, is surprising just because, you know, you don't ever think that, like, your friend is going to become a movie star. But at the time, I was like, these people are way funnier than the people who are currently movie stars, or are, are, I thought, or are as funny. So it's not, it's not a surprise in that way. Right. Yeah. And what is, the, what is the premise of Neighbors for those who are uh, unaware? Um, so it's a, uh, it's basically, it's about a, um, uh, it's about a dystopian future where people play a game show where they have to fight each other. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's about, um, it's basically, sorry. I would, you sorry. think you just keep I going with that keep one. Going, going. It's a game show, uh, that was actually, wasn't the premise of The Running Man super similar to The Hunger Games? I'm just going to say it. Did you see The Running Man? I did not. Uh, see, no one, there's no cultural memory, that's why you do that. I'm going to remake The Hunger Games in 20 years. Uh, uh, the Running Man's uh, fantastic. Well, so do you blame The Hunger Games books for that one? Because really, the movies are obviously... Uh, yeah, the books. It is The Running Man. Well, then, what do you, I mean, Divergent, which is coming out in a week, is a hell of a lot like The Hunger Games. See, I don't know, I haven't read Divergent, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know much about it. Um, but it looks similar, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I shouldn't insult things. <laughs> I honestly, I'm, I'm not, I, I only hear great things about the Hunger Games, so I should really watch them. Uh, but uh, what was I going to say? What I'm talking about. Uh, uh, premise of Neighbors. <laughs> premise of Neighbors. Yes, it's uh, which, by the way, Neighbors is. There's a movie called Neighbors about neighbors that fight from the 1980s. So I'm not really one to talk. <laughs> it stars uh, 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 it's a uh, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. But um, uh, Neighbors is about, uh, it's Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne are a young couple with a baby, um, a new baby, she's like six months old, and Zac Efron, and Dave Franco, and Chris Mintz Blast move in next door with a fraternity, and they go to war. Got it. Yes. And how, I mean, everybody knows that guys like Chris and Seth have a lot of, have a lot of comedy chops. How yeah. is Zac, I mean, he's obviously, he's been testing himself a lot over the past couple of years, whether it was in The Paperboy, mm -hmm. uh, That Awkward Moment, which just came at the just came out this. I mean, it's his timing. Can he? Can oh yeah, yeah. He's really. I mean, he is like, 
you know, he's these these actors that grow up through the Disney machine have insane chops, you know, and like um, and he's uh, you know uh, you know he's really really he's he's very funny and he also knows what makes him funny and he's not afraid to be the straight man in certain scenes. He's not, and he also, I mean, one of some of my favorite improvs in the movie is he has a very natural way of improving. He doesn't try hard for the joke. He right. tries to be kind of in the moment and be natural, which is, you know, the best way to do it. So yeah. he's, uh, yeah, he's great and he really holds his own and also has an insane, I mean, he's a proper movie star. He has a insane screen presence and as the villain in this movie, or he has villainous tendencies. He's not, I don't think there's any villain in the movie. Um, everyone's their own worst enemy, is right. my theory of movies. But uh, he, uh, he is the king goes to kind of a dark, little bit of scary place, which is good for the movie. It makes that it makes he's a real foil for Seth and Rose. So, you you brought up improv. How much of your style? I mean, are you kind of a slave to your script and ask all of your actors to follow it, or do you give them a lot of flexibility? To... I prep the script as if it's gonna we're gonna shoot the script and not improv at all. So we were re I'm really hard on the script. We do. I like to do multiple table reads and, you know, really, and then in rehearsals we improv and we put those improvs into the script and we discover stuff, you know, in the rehearsals. That's really important. And then on the day I'll shoot the script just to have it and then I go off and let everyone improv. Um, right. And I'll also throw jokes out and yell jokes out and sometimes in improvs you kind of discover you know, an area that's really funny and we'll kind of fine-tune it, you know, like I'll like find, like yell out different lines or like Evan will pitch lines or uh, Brendan and Andrew who wrote the, the draft, will, who wrote the script, will, will pitch lines and stuff. So it, it ends up being kind of a, you know, big kind of, you know, thing. Like, right. So, yeah, it's a combination. It's a combination of, for me it's a combination of script and improv. How much feedback do you take from some of your actors on the script if you know that they can write and you already have a relationship with them? Oh, a ton. I mean, it's. I, I think it's. Uh, I, I love making movies because it's super collaborative. Right. Um, and uh, the actors I've worked with, I've been really lucky to work with actors who have really good, great instincts. You know. Right. Um, and like, for example, with Zach, like, there's a there's a moment right before he's fights with Dave Franco, not to ruin anything, <laughs> and uh, he was like, I feel like I should be drinking Jack Daniels and eating an apple, and I was like, that's the. F weirdest choice <laughs> and it's awesome and it makes the move the scene really tense and strange like he's just like you know David knows he did something wrong and he's walking up to Zach to like apologize and Zach's sitting there with a the Jack Daniels and eating an apple and it's like oddly scary and so right. it's like so there's just stuff like that that like that's like a small example but um you know and as we like as we kind of worked on all the characters kind of to you know with Rose for example like it was important to her that her this this character not be a nag in any way. Usually, the the, the woman in these characters is, in these movies is kind of not the funny part. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, none of us want it. I hate that. You know, I like I I think in my movies I've gone away from that. You know, and made the female characters like as funny as the guys. You know, right? And she's like hysterical in the movie, and she, a lot her notes were like there was still one area in the movie where she's being a little bit hard on Seth or like and. She was like, I feel like the character wouldn't do it here. And we were like, oh yeah, you're right, that doesn't make sense. So, the, so it's important to bring everyone's thoughts into it. Right. Uh, and then sometimes an actor will be like, I don't know if I'll say that line. If I, should, if I would say that line, I'll just be like, just say it, it's funny. And if it doesn't, it's not funny, I won't use it. <laughs> <laughs> so like, the, you know, and, and they trust me because I take their, their suggestions. So they trust me even if they're not sure about something. Right. So, yeah. You kind of brought up the, the role of some of the female characters in comedy. Do you feel like that is a situation that's improving where, say, 10, 15 years ago, the women were always kind of afterthoughts, and now you not only have movies where they're the main characters, but in ones where they're kind of side characters, they really have more to, to work yeah. with? Yeah, I think it is changing. I mean, it's still, it's still, you know, there's still movies, and it kind of is the, it depends on the point of the movie, you know, and who's starring in it, but there's still movies where the female character is just there to be cool, right. which is like, or they're there to, like, lambast scold their husband and scold, you know? pretty or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but I think it is changing. I think, like, the movies I've done, like, I think, you know, Sarah Marshall had, like, was Kristen Bell, like, Kristen Bell and, like, yeah. Mila Kunis were both like got to be funny and weird in that movie, and um, uh, and then obviously Bridesmaids is really you know had that too. Um, uh, we had a screening. The, what was our last or one of our screenings? The focus group afterwards, they were like, you know, they ask if you like different characters and why, and they're like, did you like Rose? I'm like, Rose, Rose's character tests like amazingly well, and everyone really likes her. 
and they're like, why do you like her? And one person was like, I liked her because she wasn't always yelling at the man. <laughs> that was like so depressing. It's such a depressing, like, all you have to do is like not yell at, like, and be angry and you're like, it's like people like you. So it's, so it's, it's still a low, a uh, medium to low bar to pass, but I think that it's changing and people, I think that, I think that female comedy characters are, are changing for the, for the, for the better. Right. Kristen's, I th doesn't, I think Veronica Mars premieres yeah, tonight premieres, too. Yeah, yeah. I ran into her yesterday, I haven't seen her in a while. She's, uh, my daughter is obsessed with Frozen, so it was very, I was oddly starstruck when I saw her. I <laughs> have worked with three years ago, so. So how many times have you had to listen to Let It Go in the last oh, months? <laughs> numerous, but you know what, I'm, I'm, I love it too, so it's, it's, not, it's partially my daughter and partially I just really like that song. Yeah. And, and all the songs, as I, you know, so. Did you always know, I mean, do you just want to write comedy? Like, do you have interest in veering into other areas, or do you feel like some of your comedies have enough more, have kind of a little yeah, more I mean, to I think them? Like, like, Five Year Engagement wasn't a straight comedy. Or... Yeah, yeah, like, I think, like, I'll always find my way in through comedy. Like, I think, I mean, I think as a person, I experience life in a humorous way, <laughs> so, yeah. you know? So, like, I think there's no, I'm never gonna do, like, a straight drama, or I'm never gonna, like, do the sequel to 300. That's, like, not where my head's at, but, but I think like, uh, but I could imagine doing different, you know, stuff that's c comedy, but maybe action comedy, or maybe you know, going outside of my comfort zone in that way. You know? Right. So, yeah. Is there? I mean, is there an idea that you have? That you have kind of. Most writers have some idea that they've been sitting on for a really long time that they'd like to make at some point. They yeah. just haven't had the time or the funding or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Do you have a few of those sitting around? Where? Yeah, I have. Well, I have. You know, I've been pretty lucky in my career that I got to. I've been able to consistently make movies, and the, really, the the movie that was closest to my heart and to who I am is Five Year Engagement. I think, and I made it, and it was. I I loved that movie, and I loved the way it came out. But that was like my most personal movie in a way. I mean, that didn't happen to me. My right. wife and I <laughs> met and we're like, we're gonna get married, like that. But a lot of the themes and stuff are stuff that I really, um, you know, that I, I, two times I've had nervous breakdowns in my life was when I graduated from college and when I had my first kid. And it was the exact same experience. I acted really weird. I was like, did a lot of strange things. <laughs> you know, like, like, well, I mean, what kind? And, uh, what kind of things? Uh, one of the weird things I did, so when, oh, so this is, I remember, like, with my, when we had our daughter, and I don't know if you have kids, do you have kids? Not yet. Not yet, yeah. Like, we took our daughter, six month old, on, like, I would say easily 12 flights before she was six months old, which is insane. Like, you right. know, so you just, like, stay home. You're just going to be home. And I, <laughs> and I remember, too, I got really, really into cooking right when she was born as a way of avoiding... Like, I still was helping, but I was creating these very complicated, fancy dinners. And my, meanwhile, my wife was like, I just need help bouncing the fucking baby. You know what I mean? So, like, so I, you, I kind of was reacting in that way um, uh, to having a baby. And, like, you know, and, but my wife was too in different ways, too. And so there, so the capture, two characters were having nervous breakdowns. In a very, in, and there was an early version of the script where we talked about liminal stages when of your life where your life is changing and right. uh, both those characters are in liminal stages of their lives where they're, and, they're, and they, they're both going through nervous breakdowns and so are taking that crap out on the other person um, and that seemed really rich to me and emotionally c complex but not too complex to not be able to make a really funny movie out of it. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, you have bounced around between a more personal story like that mm -hmm. and then movies like Muppets, which are just kind of yeah. off the wall. The, yeah. <laughs> the the new Muppet movie comes out in, in a couple weeks. weeks. Yeah, March yeah. 21st, yeah. Um, the junkets this weekend, but I had to be here. Like, <laughs> yeah. How, uh, kind of what's what's changed from the first one? You know, what where did you take it? Because obviously uh, Jason's not involved in yeah. this one. No, pretty much a, a lot of new characters, new director. Yeah, same director. Same, yeah, James, James directed the first, yeah, yeah. the first one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, James and James and I wrote it, um, wrote this one, and uh, it's, um, you know, I think it's like slightly, it's a crazier movie, and I think in certain ways, like, we, like it's a caper, like the movie's a caper. My right. favorite Muppet movie is actually a great Muppet caper, so there's a lot of that kind of yeah. stuff in it. Um, it's a little bit, it's less nostalgic, because I feel like we did that in the first one, and we introduced the Muppets, like we couldn't, we couldn't beat the, uh, the sentiment and emotional 
emotionalness, whatever. <laughs> the, emotional, emotionality. The emotionality. Yeah. Is that a word? I, don't even I think know. it is. Yeah, that's, that's okay, okay, I'll take it. I'll take we'll it. make it work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of the first one. So why even compete with that? So we went a completely different and went a more kind of zany route. And really what the, like, following kind of the, the trajectory of those early Muppet movies where the, the Muppet movie had this kind of sent, sentimental thing um, going on and this, then, then, this, then, then Great Muppet Caper and Muppet Save Manhattan right. became more kind of like crazy comedies, you know, and so I think that that's, you know, and there still is an emotional through line and you still will tear up at, at critical moments that have been scientifically designed in the lab, but, <laughs> but, but and the songs are just awesome and hysterical. Um, Brett McKenzie did an amazing job with them, so I'm... So, Oscar nomination number two. I mean, I'll, I'm not responsible <laughs> for the songs, but, but he deserves it. They're really, really good, really funny, and there's one song, there's this torch song that's just awesome, and um, yeah, it's just a great movie. I'm really excited to get out there. Do you get the sense, I mean, assuming that it does well, which I think everyone th thinks it will, that Disney's just going to want, like, a new one every couple of years, <laughs> yeah. or...? I mean, I, I hope so. I hope it, um, I, first of all, I hope it does well, and I hope they keep wanting to make them, because they're really fun to write, like, and there's strangely an endless number of stories you can tell with those characters. Right. Um, so, and honestly, they're also not scary. Which, as a, as the father, and, and they appeal to all so demographics. You can, you can bring your kids, and yeah. like you'd be surprised how many animated movies are scary. You know, there's too loud. Or just aim like I just saw Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Oh yeah, which I really liked. Yeah, but a lot of the humor and references are gonna go right over anyone under the age of like 14. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's you. Yeah, yeah, and you have to find that kind of like what The Simpsons does, where you have like gags like in the Muppets where you, you know like some Muppets star that in the Simpsons but like originally not you know, in it, like originally um, uh, that where you have gags for adults I mean gags for kids that are just ridiculous and silly and then you have like references and stuff for adults you know um, and I think you have that if you have that strike that nice balance then you get everyone excited but I think the big thing I love about the Muppets is they're not scary which is like which is that uh, although my daughter is really funny Jane for the first one my daughter was she was four, um, and James's daughter is also four, maybe five, and she was scared of animal. And so she told my daughter that she was scared of animal, and my daughter had no idea which one was animal. And so she goes, and she's like, which one's animal? And I'm like, that one's animal. And she's like, get me away from animal! <laughs> like, I had no idea, wasn't to decide if she was scared of animals. So I guess animal can be scared. <laughs> cool. Well, I think we got to wrap things up, but uh, before I let you go, anything else about Neighbors that you feel like everyone else out there should know before a few people get to see it tonight? Um, no, I'm just really proud of it and excited, and uh, it is, it is, I, I attempted to create a party in the movie theater, and I think uh, we have successfully done that. So. That's, Austin's a good place for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for coming by. Yeah, cool, thanks.